5,000 years ago, our distant ancestors built a burial mound on the banks of the River Boyne. Newgrange was standing even before the Great Pyramids of Egypt. It was a remarkable achievement by a people we know almost nothing about. On midwinter's day, the rising sun shines into the centre of the mound, lighting for a few brief moments the chamber within. This phenomenon has always excited curiosity, but a recent investigation suggests that these prehistoric builders may have been even more skilled than previously thought. The study was carried out by Tim O'Brien and Tom Ray of the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies, a place more usually associated with cosmic ray experiments. Hello, John Murray, RTE, to see Professor Tom Ray. Okay. If you ask the average scientist, even, what the chances of uh, Newgrange being accidentally aligned with the uh, sunrise in the shortest day of the year, they'll give you a figure like one in a million. But in fact, it's much, much lower. Our calculations show that it's closer to about one in ten. And with those sort of uh, statistics, the uh, case for Newgrange isn't uh, terribly strong. When you compare it with a site like uh, Stonehenge, for example, the chances of the alignment there being accidental are more like one in 300. I had a look at these uh, figures, and um, as I've already mentioned, that on the surface it didn't look terribly convincing, but I wanted to see whether there was any additional evidence to support the, um, the solar theory for Newgrange. As early as um, 1909, uh, an English astronomer called Lockyer pointed out that the passage at Newgrange pointed towards sunrise on the shortest day of the year. But it wasn't until the late 60s when Michael O'Kelly, an archaeologist from Cork, excavated the site that the roof box was discovered. And when he discovered the roof box and the gap behind it, he thought there must be some astronomical significance in this. And one very interesting finding was that when he actually excavated the roof box, he found that there were scratch marks underneath the first and second roof slabs. So the impression was that whoever built the, the roof box moved it um, into various positions before they were finally happy about it. Before the team could carry out their investigation, they needed precise information, especially on the layout of the passage and roof box. Detailed photographs and measurements were taken to build up a more complete picture. Well, the first step was to do a survey of the roof box. And that was kindly done for us by the um, Office of Public Works. With the results from that survey, and also the results from a photographic study that we did around the time of the winter solstice last year, we were able to work out exactly what the limits on the sky were defined by the roof box. Of special interest was the orientation of the Earth relative to the Sun. It's the tilt of the Earth on its axis that determines the length of day during the seasons. What we found was that at the moment um, you have to wait, at the present day you have to wait over four and a half minutes before sunlight penetrates into the main chamber. But what we were interested in doing was finding out what would have happened 5,000 years ago when the monument was first built. Um, at that time, the tilt of the earth was different than it is now. At the moment, the tilt of the earth is 23 and a half degrees. That's the same tilt that gives rise to the, um, the seasons. But then the tilt would have been about 24. And that's a small difference. But what it meant, in practical terms, was the shortest day of the year then was even shorter than it is now, and the longest day that little bit longer. But it also meant that where the sun rose was different. So when we extrapolated back to that time to try and find out what would have happened then, we found that the sun rose just within the limits defined by the roof box. 
the sun would have penetrated through the roof box, gone through the um, gap between the first and second roof slabs, and then made its way all the way down the passage into the main chamber, where it would have illuminated the, um, the floor of the main chamber. But it would have gone much further than it does now. It would have gone back into the backmost recess, within a very short distance of the back wall, and illuminate the um, three-leaf spiral, which is um, visible in the back chamber. Well, what would have happened, if we imagine this is the roof box, is that 5,100 years ago, the sun would have risen in this bottom left-hand corner. It would then move along this path and disappear up in the top right-hand corner. So the whole thing is symmetrical to the path of the sun over 5,000 years ago. Well, on the basis of our findings, the statistical estimate has been an accident, as some people have argued in the past, um, is very, very remote, more like 1 in 300. I think the case is as good as um, sites such as Stonehenge. But we must remember that Newgrange was built about 1,000 years before Stonehenge. So it may well be the case that Ireland has the oldest observatory in the world.